morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I'm sorry this is going to be a fast one, but you know, got to go. Have a meeting, doing things. As we always do, though, let's begin with our prayer. Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia. Quia quemeru is deportare, Alleluia. Resurrexit sicut dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia, for the Lord has truly risen, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant we beseech thee that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Great. Wednesday in May, it's a beautiful day. Sky is blue. The snow melted from the other day. And it's lovely. Should be a very nice day around here today. Hopefully where you are too. All right, let's dig in. That's it. That's the weather report. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, life of the faithful, glory of the humble, blessedness of the just. Listen kindly to the prayers of those who call on you, that they who thirst for what you generously promise may always have their fill of your plenty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The word of God continued to spread and grow. After Barnabas and Saul completed their relief mission, they returned to Jerusalem, taking with them John, who was called Mark. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Maniard, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. So they sent forth by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia, and from there sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived in Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult because you rule the peoples in equity, the nations on the earth you guide. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me believes not only in me, but also in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me sees the one who sent me. I came into the world as light, so that everyone who believes in me might not remain in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not observe them, I do not condemn him, for I did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Whoever rejects me and does not accept my words has something to judge him, the word that I spoke. It will condemn him on the last day, because I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. So what I say, I say as the Father told me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to go real fast. 
Here's the big one. Holding on to the word of, the, of God, holding on to the word is a tricky thing. And we frequently talk about what it is to hear the voice of, for example, the shepherd, as we've been talking about the last several days, and to follow him. But let's also be realistic. We don't always hear the voice of the shepherd. It's not always there for us to hear. And not just because, you know, sometimes we're paying attention to sometimes we're not. Also, you know, that darkness does kind of come to us it's in the world. Obviously, the Lord is saying this in the gospel today. I came as the light so that the darkness would not persist. And there's this very important thing, after all, of holding on to the word, even when we do not hear it. Obviously, it happens. Obviously, it does work. We can do that. And <clears throat> kind of the big thing, of course, I've been saying during Easter, read the scriptures, especially in the frame of the Holy Spirit. Where's the Holy Spirit in this gospel we just read that's very much the Father and the Son, or rather the Father and the Word? Well, in fact, the whole world cannot contain the Word. The whole world cannot contain it. And yet, we say that we must hold on to it. And even more than that, possess it to you know, eternal life, the rest of that gospel that we heard today. There are wonderful examples of it. Where's the Holy Spirit in it? Think of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who contains the word by the Holy Spirit. This is how that worked. And today, still, the Holy Spirit is conceiving the word in us. That's like the most important Christmas message. Yeah, it's an Easter time, but we're talking about Christmas now. But the whole point of our celebration of Christmas is really this, that you know, actually we have the word too, and the Holy Spirit is making it real in us. And not for our like possession in a very kind of it's mine and mine alone kind of way, but that it will be in us. And even in those times when we do not have the benefit of hearing the word spoken to us, of hearing the voice of the shepherd directly, we still have the word with us. For those of us who are you know, here right now, paying attention to these things, we are holding onto the word. We are listening for it. We are always doing this. This is our attitude as Christians. But this is also a gift of the Holy Spirit, that we should be attentive to it, and not just occasionally, but be able to bring it with us, and not just so that it exists as some kind of like the record of it somewhere, you know, a book, something like that, but actually alive in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So there you go. Even in a place where, a little gospel where the, God, or the Holy Spirit is not incredibly obvious, very present. How else could we have the word and accept the word and live by the word, if not because the Holy Spirit is making it alive in us? And this is a beautiful thing. There you go. So a little bit of the Holy Spirit and a little bit of Mary and a little bit of Christmas, and that's it. I'm done. There you go. <laughs> All right, we got to keep going. As we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar and for all bishops, that through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary, they will be protected from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may overcome all adversity and grow ever deeper in relationship with our Redeemer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that in this springtime, we give thanks to God for all his creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That there be peace among all nations, especially in Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For whom or what else shall we pray? Through the intercession of St. Monica for all our friends and families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. The same Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Really fast today. Let's keep praying just a little bit. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. Everyone have a lovely day. <laughs> See you again on Saturday. All right, God bless you all. Bye-bye.